Hello and welcome back to another, well, I guess I can't call this an ad nauseum video. It turns out that we're going to be playing some Pioneer today, uh, for those of you who may not be aware, because you're living under a rock. Pioneer is um, Magic's newest format. It is starting with Return to Ravnica, and it will consist of all standard legal sets from Return to Ravnica through the present day. So currently through Eldraine, but when the Return to Theros releases in a few months, it'll include that and all future standard legal sets. Now, it might first seem like it is hard to put together combo decks that uh, I would be interested in in this format. Um, so typically standard is thought of as, as being a format that doesn't necessarily have all too many combo decks. I mean, I know we did just kind of have scape shift. We did have um, Nexus. So recently there have been some, but I wouldn't call it full of them on a regular basis. Fortunately, there are some pretty powerful engine cards in Pioneer that we can build around in order to build uh, spell-based, engine-based combo decks. And the one I'm most interested in to start us off with is Jeskai Ascendancy. So this Jeskai Ascendancy has been getting a whole bunch of hype from pretty much everyone going into Pioneer. And I've seen a lot of takes on the deck that lead in a bunch of different directions. There are people trying to do stuff with Emery and Paradoxical Outcome, which kind of is an entirely different deck. There are people not playing any of the mana creatures and are instead just playing four Sylvan Awakening. Excuse me, from what I've seen of that deck, I think that deck is a whole bunch slower. So in maybe, I don't want to give an exact number, but in a decent amount of testing in like, the open playrooms and before they even release the open playrooms on Magic Online, people using the freeform rooms to test Pioneer, so I did some of that as well. This deck is killing on turn four fairly consistently. Um, now, not necessarily if you get interacted with in some way, but for the most part. I've added a few different tech slots of my own compared to it's hard to say that there's a stock list at this point but compared to a lot of the other lists i was seeing um for one retraction helix is not my tech but i think retraction helix is definitely a very appealing card to be playing in your deck in that with dragon mantle it's a deterministic combo where if you have two creatures you can Retraction Helix the Dragon Mantle, and then replay the Dragon Mantle, untap your both your creatures. So that's a guaranteed way to draw your entire deck, and that is certainly powerful. Um, but one of the things I noticed when I was starting off by testing this deck was that, so if your ideal play is to play like a Mana Dork on turn two, and then you play like an Ascendancy on turn three, and you have like one mana left over, you usually can't combo turn three, it really you're trying to combo turn four. But if you don't have a mana dork in your starting hand, sometimes you have to like commune with the gods on turn two, and then play your mana dork on turn three, and then you end up in the situation where on turn four you have four lands and a dork. So you have five mana, you can play your Jeskai Ascendancy, you can go down to two mana, and it's still kind of hard to combo because... A lot of the stock lists don't really have any way to get you another creature other than Sylvan Awakenings, um, and that that doesn't quite work. So I'm running a couple different tech pieces with an eye towards increasing that rate of, um, or not really increasing the rate of, but better enabling some early comboing. So what you might see is this Hydroform. So Hydroform is great in that you can turn a land into a creature giving you essentially another dork to continue chaining with Jeskai Ascendancy. So 
it's worth noting that Hydro Form costs two mana, so you do need to have two mana going into it. Um, but it kind and it it's not exactly mana neutral because you still need one more mana because your land will likely be tapped. So if you use it on an untapped land, that's one thing. But you need one mana left over after that to untap your creature and your land, and then to really start going off. So Hydro Form puts you down mana, but up. A creature that's really good uh these expedites are kind of doing the same sort of thing where if we play another dork we can just give it haste now notice how i just said that with the commune into creature into turn four four mana and a creature and a jeskai ascendancy that line we have two mana left over so like playing a creature we wouldn't have mana left over for expedite so it requires going plus one mana on our combo turn first so getting plus one mana is actually kind of tricky because generally in the modern Jeskai Ascendancy deck, you can do stuff like Summoner's Pact, which is a free spell that maintains your card count. Um, so you, you could Summoner's Pact for like Verdant Eidolon or whatever, and that'll take you plus one mana. You could play a zero drop in general, that will take you plus one mana. You could play um you can play a metamorphose and metamorphose takes you plus one mana so starting with just one creature in the modern deck it is usually pretty reasonable to be able to go plus one mana at some point if you start out just by casting cantrips in this deck not as much now i've seen some people playing like astral cornucopia and various uh other zero drops you'll notice i have a tormont script in my board we could play those but they don't really do a whole lot outside of comboing and while they can kickstart a combo when you play like a turn two dork turn three ascendancy with no other mana floating that just kind of takes you to one mana and then you need to go from one mana to two mana so you'd have need to have another one and the torments the torment script could sometimes be used as grave hate but and sure the astral cornucopia could sometimes be used as just like a, an extra mana piece. But I think they have less utility overall than something like Rosethorn Acolyte, which can in some situations be an extra mana dork that you could play for the creature side. And in some situations, um, one add one mana essentially reads go down a card but go up a mana if you have a jet active Jeskai Ascendancy. So we're trying out Rosethorn Acolyte as kind of my, my interesting tech piece here. We have still some number of Sylvan Awakenings. I think it's still pretty powerful. And we're using Dig Through Time as our top end of choice in conjunction with Commune with the Gods. Um, filling our graveyard for Dig Through Time. That's, you know, something nice that we can do. The sideboard is kind of thrown together. This is mostly guesswork. Um, nothing really particularly huge to talk about. I mean, ley lines are fairly nice. We have some extra Veil of Summers. Tamiyo, hopefully, is good against a lot of the grindier decks. I have a Silence in here in case we come ac across like other counter uh, another counter magic deck and we want more than just these Veils. Obviously, we have a couple main deck Veils already. Um, and maybe one of the last interesting cards here I have is Cut to Ribbons. Cut to Ribbons is sort of a staple of the modern Jeskai Ascendancy list. It is a multicolored card, so you could Glittering Wish for it if you were playing the modern version. But I think it's still pretty good in this version. Uh, we noticed that Cut is a slightly inefficient removal spell, but having your win con also double as a removal spell is definitely a powerful thing, as anyone who plays Adnaws might occasionally know. Sometimes we have those lines where we lightning storm like a creature that we really need to kill. And then Ribbons is just a, a giant fireball or dream life or whatever, that type of effect. Um, and notably, it doesn't target. So if they have a ley line, we can just kill them with this. I had a really interesting game in testing where I was playing against a Nexus deck, and they were holding up Fog, and I was doing all of my comboing, and they were like, obviously holding up this one green for Fog, and they weren't conceding, and they weren't, you know, F6ing or anything. Um, and then eventually, I discard Cut to Ribbons off of a Jeskai Ascendancy. Uh, loot trigger and then they just scoop and they're like ribbons will do it um so that was that was pretty cool 
Um, one of my other favorite games was that I had a turn four kill through two thought seasons actually in the last set or the last match I played in open play with this deck. So I definitely think there's some power here. Obviously some stuff is gonna need to be refined as we go forward. Obviously the sideboard is not particularly well tuned. I'm sure there's room to tune tech cards in the main deck. This is just sort of an early iteration of my own testing. Obviously the land base is a little bit questionable. I am trying to run some of these temples, get some scry in, lumbering falls just as a creature land has the ability to occasionally become a second creature if we need it to be, sort of similar to Hydroform. So we're going to jump into a league and we're going to try this out. Um, if things go well, maybe we'll, uh, we'll snag a 5-0, that'd be nice, but you know, obviously we can't necessarily expect that. Let's see how it goes, I'm excited. Um, also, I guess as you might have been able to figure out by now, uh, it's just me here today. I have no guests for once. So I guess I'll try to maybe uh, focus on as much explaining or line discussion as I can myself. I'll try and go through my thought process um, since we don't really have that banter that I might usually have. So I think this hand is actually pretty decent. We have a Scryland, we have a couple Opts, we have a Commune to find a um, Jeskai's Tendency. Things could certainly go wrong for us with this hand, but I think I'm going to keep it. This might be a hand where, we'll, where we want to play this Acolyte as a, um, as a mana creature. And we're against the red deck. So our hand is a little bit slow, so this is somewhat concerning. We'll see how it goes though. Drawing a land was decent. So now we have the interesting question of do we lead with Mana Confluence or do we lead with the Scry Land? I think we lead with the Scry Land. We're gonna try to scry a Mana Dork to the top here. Land, hmm, land is tough. I think we're gonna bottom it because I think between these Ops and this Crash Through we can probably find another land and I really feel like I need a uh, a mana creature. I could have kept it with the idea of communing next turn, and then the turn after that I have um, mana creature plus like opt or whatever, or maybe a tap land, or maybe a track wall. Not really be able to use the creature for helix that turn. But I think I'd like to use this commune to find a Jeskai Ascendancy if possible. So we'll see how this goes. Mana Confluence. Not going to be great here, but we are familiar with using this to, um, or this being sort of a city of brass roll against red decks. Let's see what they exiled. They exiled Skewer and run away Steamkin. They have a Soul Scar Mage. Okay. Sylvan Carry added. Perfect draw. Perfect draw. This is exactly what we need. So now I'll have three mana next turn. Hopefully I can do something like opt into a land and then commune to find a Jeskai Ascendancy. And hopefully we don't get turn four because it's looking like we might be able to turn four here. But if we were on the, uh, on the play, that might be a little bit slow. I need to strongly consider blocking one of these creatures, I think. So they have Steamkin, Skewer, Exile. Let's see how they start. They might be incentivized to play out this, scheme, this Steamkin first. Because that way they would get some sort of buff on whatever they're doing. As it stands, if they just attack with these two lands, I kind of feel like I might block. Hmm, that's hard actually. Because they'd have to have two one drops to have prowess. I mean, they could have like shock shock, but obviously they don't have bolt, skewer sorcery speed, light up the stage is sorcery speed. They can't play either of those yet anyway. Um they have shock shock and I don't block 
then I'm taking 3, 6, I'm taking 10 and going to 7. And then if post-combat they have something like land skewer, I'm just in a lot of trouble. I think I think I actually am interested in blocking them. Um, this is one of the things I actually found pretty hard with this deck. Um, deciding when to block with carry added and when not to. I got blown out by a uh, mono white deck at one point that was playing target player like Saxon attacking a blocking creature. I think I was far enough behind so that I kind of had to go for that, and so maybe it didn't make that big of a deal, but, but still. So here, here I think we need to commune and just try to find a Jeskai Ascendancy. We whiff, so that is definitely not great. To play a mana confluence here and hope that these ops can get us there. Uh, is there any merit to playing crash through? No, I think it should be opt. So it's actually looking like this Rosethorn Acolyte might end up needing to be a plus mana card. If it if that's how we end up using it, then that's fine with me. So they have a Swift Spear, the Skewer is no longer usable, so that's that's kind of good. They didn't really get too much value out of that light up the stage. I think here I'm definitely interested in blocking, given that they only have one mana up. I think I will not block this Runaway Steamkin, though. So I'll be taking... 4 damage to 11. Let's see if he has another light up the stage. Okay. And they exiled Wild Slash Swift Spear. Okay, so Wild Slash isn't relevant. They're playing the Swift Spear now. Skewer is already gone. They have two cards in hand. I think it's pretty likely that I'm dead next turn. So we just need to really hope we find a Jeskai Ascendancy off of these. That's not good. Let's see here. That's also not good. Looking a little bit grim. Okay, so we could play two carry addeds and hope to just block a bunch of stuff. I think that's our best line. We would end up taking, if we did that, we would end up taking four pain, going to six, and then we could block, block, block. If we have anything, we die. So maybe we have to chump one on this Steamkin. Block, block, we take two. If he has a spell, even a shock, it's three, four, five, six, and we're dead. Alternately, we could retraction helix one of them and bounce the steamkin. I think I like that plan. I could block something and bounce the steamkin and then play one of these caryatids and then play the breeding pool tapped. So I'm at nine, I'd be at eight, but I'd, I'd be taking three. Actually, we're still dead to a shock that way. No, 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 I have two blocks and a bounce, so we're not dead to a shock that way. A shock is only six damage. Even a like a lightning strike or something would be seven damage, and I'd be at eight. So this insulates us against that a bit. Yeah, we're we're gonna go with this, and hopefully we have one more turn here to top deck something. Now it's it's possible that just, that they just kill us anyway. We'll see. Oh wait, they have remove counters to sacrifice their ramen app. Uh, maybe, we'll see. We'll see what they do. Because that represents two damage, but this is only three, that'd be four, and they'd have to use a ramen app, so they'd only have one mana left after that. So I guess if they had shock between that and sacrificing the ramen app, that would be enough. I think there's I think that's still probably our best play though. Maybe they'll try and use these steam the steamkin mana like aggressively to play stuff beforehand. 
We'll see. I think if we live this turn, and if we live this turn, we get a chance to top deck Jeskai Ascendancy is really what it comes down to, which is not a guaranteed thing, but it's it's a chance. Okay, so lightning strike us. Sure. So he doesn't really have anything else. Okay, no, that's that's lethal. Okay. Uh so we're against red. So I'm definitely taking out these Veil of Summers. I am interested in bringing in these Leyline of Sanctities, I think. Uh, I like Leyline in this deck a decent amount because you can just kind of loot it away with Jeskai Sentency if it's bad. I also like Retraction Helix. There's a chance they have Eidolon, and Retraction Helix is probably going to be one of our best things we could be doing against Eidolon. Things I'm not so interested in are like Hydro Form. When they have a lot of removal, Something that depends on creatures is pretty questionable. Um, I might cut a Paradise Druid for the same reason. I might even bring in the Sylvan Awakening so that, again, I don't have something that's susceptible to removal. There's a chance that like we might start comboing off and then they might kill Paradise Druid, especially if we have these Ley Lines going. That could be a bad time. Like, I'm going to shave a Dig Through Time. That can be a little bit slow. And then I will shave one of the, no, I might need to combo off of lower resources. So I might want to keep those rose thorns. I think I'll shave a crash through. Sort of our worst redraw. Okay, so we'll be on the play this time and hopefully it will go a little bit better. I think we we're still definitely in that game. Like if we had hit a ascendancy off of our commune, we would have been, we would have been in good shape. We had between that and our two opts and like a couple draw steps. We had a lot of looks at an ascendancy and we just missed. Sometimes that happens. That's the downside of playing a deck that is named after a particular card. You need to find that card. If you don't, you're in trouble. Okay, so this hand is looking really good. We have a carry added, we have a Jeskai Ascendancy, we have a couple cheap cantrips, and we have a commune with the gods to try and find us like a second dork or something. I think this hand is very likely to be a turn four kill. I'm gonna lead on our Scryland, tapped. Opt, I don't think I need opt. I really just need, you know, maybe another land or a creature. Either of those would be good. Soul Scar Mage, that's fine. Sanctum, gonna play out the uh, carry added here. And again, I'm likely going to be faced with a tough decision when it comes to blocking on this next turn. If he plays land and attacks, I think I'm probably not going to block this time. Okay, they're just playing Steam Kim pre-combat, so that's a bit of a mistake on their part. They should have attacked first. They might have been able to get in with a free point of damage. Maybe he's figuring last time I should that I would, but I think because of my position in this game, I'm less likely to, to, to need to do that here. I think here, I'm probably just going to jam this Jeskai Ascendancy. And I think since I'm still at 20 life, I can afford to shock here to do so. So we're going to go red, blue, white, play our Jeskai Ascendancy, and I'm going to pass the turn. On their end step, I'm going to try and opt here. We'll see what we can find. This is going to be a situation where it's going to look like Expedite will hopefully be relevant or something that we can draw into. So 
so they definitely don't have two spells off of one mana. I guess they could have like land pyroclasm or something. If they do that, then sure they got me. I don't actually I don't even know if pyroclasm is legal in this format. I think it's probably not. So let's see what they exile. They exile land and wild slash. Wild slash doesn't do anything. Uh, I well I guess it doesn't actually matter if I play the op now or on my turn because now that we have this chess guy sends out the opt is free. I was intending on playing it on the end step. So I'm going to lead with an opt here. I'd like to draw. I think this might be relevant to take us up to. I think commune is going to be our worst card here. Yeah. Don't want that. Paradise Druid could be decent. Let's, uh, let's play this mantle first, though. Now I'm probably am gonna loot away the source stone acolyte because really what I'm looking for is either um, expedite or the uh, what's it called the um, the land thing, Sylvan Awakening. Probably gonna loot that away with this trigger if it comes to that. Yeah, having an untapped land might potentially be better. If I go up on mana, I might have been able to use that Lumbering Falls, but... So let's bottom this commune. I'm going to crash through. That can maybe do something. Traction Helix is interesting. I think the card I need least actually might be this commune. Second retraction helix, definitely not as good. But if I give my guy a retraction helix, it kind of costs me a card. Let's do it and see what happens. I mean, worst case, I could like bounce one of their things as a tempo play and almost certainly not die this turn. Don't think I need second paradise druid. bounce this dragon mantle so it doesn't really end up costing me a card. I think now we're approaching territory of, I guess Expedite off of this chain would still be good enough, but Sylvan Awakening isn't good enough now. Right, because we have, well, this is two mana, this is, this gets us to three mana. Sylvan Awakening untaps our carry added and then we have Retraction Helix, so I think we actually might be okay here. So let's discard that, untap, draw off the Dragon Mantle, play a Mana Confluence, tap this for green, cast the Seasonal Ritual. Oh wait, I even have four mana. I think, I'm, I, think I even have an extra mana. to draw, and I'll discard this Botanical Sanctum. And I can add a green mana. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm in very good shape here. So now I have Sylvan Awakening. I'll loot, I'll discard this Ley Line. Okay, yeah, and then I would have had it with Retraction Helix on the uh, on the Dragon Mantle, because I would have been able to just keep looping um, bounce effects. Okay, so that was that was actually a really cool win. I'm pretty happy about that. I think maybe I could consider bringing in like a Fire Impulse to have an extra piece of removal. That could be decent. Hmm. I guess I might also want this Paradise Druid on the draw to try to catch back up. I did show Leyline, I think, or did I, I forget if I clicked on Leyline or not. Um, I think I'm still going to leave it in though. I think we might cut, 
awakening on the draw for being a bit slower. And maybe we, maybe we, well, we didn't see any um, Eidolons in either game yet. So maybe we'll cut a Helix. The Firing Pulse kind of fills the same role in terms of being removal. Um, okay, I think I'm definitely interested in this hand. We have a creature. We only have one land, but we have some ops. We have a Ley Line, and we have a Commune with the Gods to find us our Jeskai Ascendancy, hopefully. So let's put this ley line into play. Okay, we're on the draw, and we do have a pain land, so this could be a little bit dicey. G2 Lava Runner, so they definitely have a lot of one drops. I think it's pretty unlikely that they have idle on. Okay, we found a Jeskai Ascendancy, that's fantastic. So now we just need to opt into land. No, I mean, this Paradise Druid could definitely die um, when we... So let's see what the Exile of Ravenop Ruins. They do have Eidolon. Okay, that's a little bit scary. I guess that's what I get for um, trying to like metagame this too much. So taking that as removal for an Eidolon I feel like was necessary. Now, I don't have a second land yet, which is not good. Um, and hopefully this ley line buys us enough time to like play our carry added out and then like retraction helix the Eidolon or something. We'll see. Oh, are they not playing it or do they have land? Oh, they don't have land Eidolon. Okay, so we're going to take one here. I think we really need to top deck a land though. On. Okay, okay, we're, we're, we still have a chance. So now we can play our carry added. Um, this is target, right? Oh no, it's each opponent. That's really annoying. So I think ideally our best draw here would be another land. I'm certainly going to block the Eidolon if they attack. Um, they have no green, so they can't have something like a Tarkus Command. They're lightning strike. What are they lightning striking themselves? Doesn't have prowess. That's oh, they're just buffing the lava runners. Okay, that's fine. That makes a lot of sense. Um. Okay. So, let's see here. If I'm taking five next turn, six, seven with playing a Helix. I think I need to Helix this turn. Which means... I guess I could play the Paradise Druid, try to block with the Druid to trade, and that way I'd only take three, four, five. I'd be at four, and then I could Helix next turn. Actually, I'd be at three because of the Confluence, but three versus four I don't think matters. If he has a land for Ramen Up Ruins, I'm dead to this, I think. But I think just Helixing this turn doesn't give me a possibility to win in the future. So I, I think I'm interested in playing out this Paradise Druid. This is not great. I really needed to draw a land there. Even if I drew a land, it might not necessarily have been enough, but I could have played Ascendancy, and then I could have, like, carry added Lava Runner, bounce idle on or something, I don't know. Like block and then bounce or whatever. We'll see. So hopefully this means I only take three on this attack. Now I could block with Paradise Druid. Um, and then I'd only take 
one on this attack, and I wouldn't be dead to ramen afterwards. How do I feel about that? Did I bring back in the hydro form? I did. I would need to top deck a land and have amazing ascended seeds. I think it's more likely that I need this mana. So even though this could kill me, I'm okay with uh, with kind of risking this here. Going to a three. Hopefully they don't have another land. Well, they do. So I'm gonna be dead here. Fine, fine. The fact that that can get through ley line is actually really annoying. Um. Okay, so let's play another one. I, I felt like we were definitely in all of those games. Um, this hand is a little bit slow, but I, I think I am interested in keeping it. So in our main, I can lead on this Slumbering Falls, probably. And then turn two, I'm looking at maybe just like cycling this Crash 3, maybe, or maybe trying to play out an Acolyte, we'll see. Or, I mean, an Acolyte on three. Ooh, another red deck. Everyone's playing red decks. Come on, creature. Sylvan Awakening. That's that's pretty good, actually. That's actually very good. So I think I'm just going to play this tapped. And then turn three, I'm going to play a Jeskai Ascendancy. And then turn four, hopefully I top deck a land in the next two turns, and I can just go off with this Sylvan Awakening. Sage. What does this do? That's interesting. I guess that's certainly a take on prowess. Okay, so we drew a land. So that's great. I'm going to play the mana confluence here. I'm going to have to take a pain from it. If I take a pain from it next turn. Actually, no. It's possible. I sh no, the stomping grounds doesn't make white. Never mind. I had to play the mana confluence. So white, blue, red. Just guy ascendancy. Here we go. Can you kill me this turn? Actually, it's can you deal 10 to me this turn? Because if you can deal 10 to me this turn, then I probably cannot win. But if you can't, then I think I do. What if they have like expedite or something? That would be gross. Still, I mean, it's only going to be six damage, but that's that's pretty aggressive. I think we're going to win here, though. I mean, barring some bad just guys since luck, but that crash through was a good pickup. All right, so we have red, this, this. Um, there's no need. Well, it's possible. I don't know. There's no need to do that yet. I think I'm going to discard this Rose Thorn Acolyte. Yeah, it's definitely not our weakest card. Here, crash through. Um, I'll discard an Ascendancy. Draw. So I'll make blue, red, red. I'm not going to tap this yet, even though they're tapped out. I don't think I need the extra mana at the moment. Let's see. Cut to ribbons is a pretty decent draw, I guess. Is it? Mm, not really, but. Okay, we'll make green, we'll make blue, we'll make green, we'll play a commune with the gods. Hopefully our best draw, to, or our best thing to find here would be the uh, the mantle or whatever, with commune. We didn't. It doesn't really matter though. Green, red, red. We'll play another commune. Might 
actually make a black mana here. It's, again, it's not possible for them to have like instant speed effects that mess us up. Discard this carry out. It doesn't matter. I think we, they're just dead at this point because we have these hasty guys. Um, I guess I'll find another acolyte. They're, they're all haste to reach indestructible trample. Um, so we can we can just go to combat and kill them. Okay. So now we can begin sideboarding. So since they're a prowess deck and not really a um, a burn deck by the looks of it, I'm definitely not going to be running in these ley lines this time. I think on the draw. Well, these veils are definitely coming out. Question is, the only possible cards I might want here are Silence and another Sylvan Awakening. I think the Hydro form might be worse than the Sylvan Awakening. I think the Silence could be decent. We could maybe cut a dig for being a bit slow again, especially on the draw. I think, I think we're going to run it like this. You know, we could... They have a decent amount of sorcery stuff, it looks like, so um, it's possible that we can like silence on upkeep to like buy a turn or something. We could also maybe silence to like protect a um, a paradise druid while we're comboing off. So this hand definitely looks like it could be a bit slow, but I, th I think I'm interested in keeping it. I mean, it has a commune, it has some lands, it has like an opt, a soul scar mage. Let's see what we draw. Carry added, very good draw. Um, so I think here I'm most interested in just playing this temple. Hmm, do I want that? I think I will actually take that. Because so next turn I play the carry added, and then the turn after that I can. Oh, wait, I'm going to have a tap land. It's possible I should have bottomed that. I guess it's also not terrible if I have like. Um, Try, like trying to go off with one dork lines. So let's see what they do. They have Shiv and Reef. That would suggest to me that they're probably playing Treasure Cruise. Especially the fact that they're playing Opt as well here. So they're definitely like a, like a red, splash blue, prowess, like Treasure Cruise, prowess type deck. So I'd be much more afraid of blocking here. See what they do though. So I knew we were getting that. Let's develop our carry added. Next turn I might play depending depending on what they do. I might play this acolyte over commune. Could be a little bit dicey. Like I want to play the tap land though, and if we have six mana on turn four. Then we could try to commune for a Jeskai Ascendancy, which is five, and then just go off from there. So they have two power each. Looks like they have something instant speed. I think I'm certainly not going to block this. I don't feel like it's enough pressure for me to, uh, to justify that. Okay, so we have a Lumbering Falls. I should have. Oh no, I couldn't instant the opt. So I play the Lumbering Falls. I can play the Acolyte, or I could play the Commune. I think there's a decent chance the Acolyte dies, but at the same time, that's points of burn that aren't going to our face. So I think I don't hate that. It's not like they can kill it this turn either. They have to do it on their turn. Again, Lightning Bolt is not the form. It's possible they will, but we'll see. Again, this is trying to get six mana on turn four, so we'll see how it goes. Another Soul Scar Mage, that's pretty scary. Um, so I think I would like to not lose this Acolyte to like a shock. So I'm just gonna pass. Sylvan Awakening, not the best draw, but I guess it could be worse. So here we'll play a commune. We really are hoping to hit Jeskai Ascendancy. 
We don't. Um, so I think I'm going to take carry added because there's some chance I have to start blocking here. Play an opt. Bot on that. Sylvan Awakening. I mean, it's a good card, but it's probably not what I wanted to see here. We're going to play the Mana Confluence. I think we're going to play a carry added. This is until my next turn, so like if I need to do one of these to buy a bit of time to like block with some guys, I could definitely do that. If they have crash through, maybe they just kill us. Let's see what they do. I'm probably blocking with like the acolyte at least. We'll see. I'm not going to block with the carry edit. Okay, it didn't die, so that's amazing. Fiery Impulse. Hmm. This is interesting. So, let's Dragon Mantle to draw a card first and hope we draw a Jeskai Sentency. We didn't. Not great. Let's play this tapped. Don't want to pay life for that. Play a Paradise Druid. We have a whole bunch of blockers now. We also have a Fiery Impulse to kill one of them. I think we really don't have any choice but to pass. Possibly should have put this on the untapped one so I could have like threatened to pump it a couple times. I wonder if they have like treasure cruises in their hand or something. Storm Chaser Mage, okay. We have. So let's go to blocks. Block there, block there. I think, it's, I think I'd like to not risk this carry added. Because I have this fire impulse for the Storm Chaser Mage. Let's see what he does. He's passing in blocks. So let's fire impulse the Storm Chaser. Two of them die. I don't know what he could have. Okay, they have treasure cruise. That explains it, I guess. I think we're probably well, I mean, we have only one creature. I don't know how much burn he's got. Just guy ascendancy, please. Okay, dig through time. That's a good draw. It's a very good draw. One, two, three. Six. Two more. We will definitely take a Jeskai Ascendancy and we will take. Um, can I afford this other dig through time? I think it's actually probably yes, the answer to that question. Now we can make a blue, a white, and a red. We can play Jeskai Ascendancy. And then we can play one, two, three, four. Oh, am I one off? I might be one off. I might have to hit on this loot. That's going to be annoying. Oh no, I can use the second Sylvan Awakening as a ritual. Yeah, I could use the second one as a ritual. Um, so that's that's pretty cool. That was a line I, I wasn't really thinking about at first. So what I mean by that is... After that trigger, assume that I like draw a land and then discard a well a land doesn't work. Let's assume I draw something completely dead and then I have to discard it. Like another dig through time. Then I have three untapped creatures, 
and I only have four cards in my graveyard at that point, so I can't dig through time. So my line would, but all of my tapped lands would be creatures. So I could play the other Sylvan Awakening, and then untap eight creatures, um, and then I would have access to my dig through time. So that would have been pretty powerful. Uh, I think this hand is decent. I'm going to lead on a Skyland on turn one, probably commune on turn two, and aim to play a creature plus another Skyland on turn three to hopefully get into a turn four kill. Notably, this is one of those hands where I may very end up very well, excuse me, end up with like four lands and a creature on turn four and need to go up cards. Excuse me. Okay, so I'm going to lead on... I guess I'm going to lead on Temple of Epiphany because hopefully it masks what I'm playing better and I'm going to have the green from the Mana Confluence anyway. I don't think I'm interested in a Dragon Mantle. Game Trail. Reveal Forest. Play an Elvish Mystic. Okay. Seems like something not particularly threatening, but we'll see. So we'll commune with the gods. Try and hit a creature. We do. We hit Sylvan Carry added, so that's good. Cut to Ribbons is in our graveyard, which is fine. It's actually probably a good thing if we end up needing to go off huge with a carry added. Although it's it's this is not going to net much mana, so it's unlikely we would be able to make great use of this cut to ribbons. It's possible that they're also just like slow enough that this might not matter. Second Jeskai Ascendancy. Probably not what we wanted to see. Definitely don't want to see a third one. Um, I mean they're gonna get to loot. Their hand's looking a bit slow as well. Questing Beast, it just got a whole bunch faster. So target Planeswalker, well we don't have a Planeswalker. We are taking seven here though, so like another Questing Beast next turn would be pretty Pretty threatening, and I can't block either of these. So we may need to kill them this turn, which would be a bit rough. Let's go blue or red, blue or white, you know what I mean. Just guy ascendancy. Ten. It's not gonna matter. We'll loot. So here I'm just trying to keep this looting chain going until I can find a thing that lets me go up mana. Um, so we'll play our opt. I don't need the second just guy ascendancy. I don't need that temple of mystery. That's pretty good. I'm gonna hold on off on it for a second. So now our best draw would be um, the, what's it called, the, um, the Hydro Form. Veil of Summer, probably not what we want. Mana Confluence, not bad, because now I'd be on three mana, so if I can find a creature plus an Expedite or something, that could get us there. That's a creature. I have two expedites. I think I'm okay with discarding that commune. Not interested in that. So we have a land. Helix. Okay. So Acolyte is like kind of risky because we go down a card. I could just play this carry added and pass. I would be able to kill them next turn, but if they have a haste creature, I'd be in I'd be in bad shape. I could commune. That puts me back down a mana. I could helix. If I helix, then I have a helix on my carry added. Oh, I could also potentially bounce this questing beast so that they'd have to replay it if they wanted to attack with it. 
think I'm interested in doing something like that. So let's helix target the carry out. And I also have the out of just like drawing it to ext ext uh no, I can, maybe I've have I been saying extirpate? It's not extirpate. Uh I'm just EX words are now flooding my mind and I'm not sure what to even call it anymore. Okay, so now I can Bounce Dragon Mantle. I can replay the Dragon Mantle. Draw. Dig through time is, is pretty decent. That might get me to ditch this commune. Untap. That'll enter. I'll draw again. And then I can bounce this questing beast. Or do I bounce the smuggler's copter? I think I bounce the questing beast. It's like the most mana intensive thing. Oh, just pass. So, um, retraction helix is really showing its value as an interaction piece. Now, we're not guaranteed to win next turn, but I think I think we're in pretty good shape. And maybe they have interaction for a Jeskai Ascendancy main deck. We'll see. Dig finding us, like, uh, what's it called? Not Expirate. Whatever the haste card is, or Hydroform would both be big. So I'm taking eight here. So I actually can't use these mana confluences anymore, though, which is a little bit rough. Maybe I should have thought about that a bit more. So maybe I should have bounced the Smuggler's Copter. I mean, if they had like another Questing Beast, we could have been in a lot of trouble, though. Okay. Expediate. Perfect. That was best draw in our deck. So here we can play Paradise Druid. We can Expediate the Paradise Druid. Draw a card. I'll discard this carry added. Untap our creatures. Speed 8 resolves. They have haste. I can make two blue and I can play a dig through time. And we're off. We're going off. Draw. Discard a mana confluence. Never using that. I'd like. Well, I only have two choices. So let's. Actually interesting. Um, make a red and a green. I'll play a dragon mantle on this guy. Draw a card. I'll discard probably this paradise druid. Yeah, we don't need that. I mean, I could have ex expediated it, but I'm, I think I'm going to get the Sylvan Awakening off, which should kind of end our creature problems if we were even having any creature problems to begin with. Um, so now we have Sylvan Awakening. So we'll draw, and now we don't need this Acolyte any or no, this land is even worse. Uh, we don't need this Acolyte anymore, but it did it did do its job of like giving us potential hits. So let's let's not underestimate the Acolyte. We'll play a crash through. Draw probably don't need this Veil of Summer. Untap, draw with the crash through, another dig through time. Definitely locks this up if it wasn't already, but it was already locked up. Um, let's not like misclick a, uh, what's it called, a Mana Confluence. I don't know if it actually lets you like undo a lethal ping from a Mana Confluence. I don't think it does. I, I could be wrong though. Um, okay, so here, let's you know, make some green. I think we might just have them lethal if we went and bothered to attack, but I'm having fun. So we're gonna wait a minute. Draw, don't, another 
our sentency, plus one, plus one. Green, we get a carry added. Blue, that. Black, black, makes it matter for ribbons. Dig through time. Yeah, all right, cool. That was that was another pretty, pretty nice win. Um, so these are really feeling like they're by the skin of our teeth, but I mean, I guess that's okay as long as we're winning. Oh wait, was that game one? That was a game one. Okay, well, so what do we want to bring in against them? Hmm, it's so Veil of Summer, pretty bad. So it's possible that these were a bad choice. I was playing against a lot of Thoughtseize decks in the, uh, in the other thing, so I thought it might be reasonable. I think Bounce is pretty good. I think a removal for an elite dork might be pretty good. I think we could think about a Sylvan Awakening over... Hmm, maybe over an Acolyte? Or maybe over this Hydroform? Or do we really need it? We, well, I might expect them to have sweepers. Maybe a little be over Paradise Druid. Acolyte. Acolyte. Okay. So what does this hand do? Honestly, not a whole lot. Kind of want to mull. What does this? It doesn't do anything. I think this hand is a lot better. I think I'm gonna probably put back the retraction helix. And play a steam vents tapped on turn one, play this paradise druid on turn two, hopefully draw a land by then to play this. Is, or no, we don't even need to because we have the paradise druid. Although we, we would expose the paradise druid, so we'll see. It's possible that they're gonna have like green enchantment removal, which could be pretty good against their Jeskai ascendancy. That would suck. We have carry added, so that's even better. I would not like to play two life, although I actually could have thought about cycling to crash through. Maybe I should have. I think I probably should have. Beautiful. That's interesting. Smuggler's Copter. Now they are down to one card in hand. So that's probably a good thing. So I here. I'm interested in playing this carry I did. The next turn I'm going to play Paradise Druid plus Lumbery Falls. And then on turn four, I'm going to try and play this Jeskai Ascendancy and kill them. Hopefully they don't have removal for it. I would like some way, so in thinking now, I would like some way to stop other colored removal besides like Assassin's Trophy Abrupt Decay on our Jeskai Ascendancy. I'm not really sure what the right card for that would be. Maybe it means we need to run like counter magic. Counter magic might be good in some other spots as well. So I, I could definitely see a future where we want to run some counter magic. Um, but I, I think so far this is really highlighting some of the benefits of the creature list, I feel. I feel like we're a whole bunch faster than the list that just involves um, the Sylvan Awakenings. Not that Sylvan Awakening is a bad card. Sylvan Awakening is a very good card. But I think it's a little bit slow. And I mean, I know that list does play some more interaction. But if you look at our like turn four rate or whatever, I think we're, we're doing like a pretty good job of like either turn fouring or like having good chances to turn four. Um, so I'm liking where a lot of that is going. So we play that. As much as I want to like cut this idiot, I think I think I have to just play this Paradise Druid here. And I see no reason to cycle this yet, because it's going to be free with the Jessica Ascendancy out. And I may like block an elf or something with this. So let's see what they do. Sure, that's fine. They're just playing like ghoul monsters. So they're they're dead here. Probably. I mean we could whiff horribly, but if things go reasonably, they're dead. That's even better. So white, red, blue, America, 
that I just got sent to see that crash through. We will loot. Don't need this fire impulse anymore. Blue, green. Maybe opt first. Draw. And I think I'm actually going to discard this cut to ribbons. We have the ribbons half of it in our graveyard, and I'm probably going to commune it to dig as my next sequence. I don't think I need a second commune because at this point, what I'm looking for most really is going to be probably um, a Sylvan, uh, whatever the heck it's called, Sylvan thing, Sylvan. I don't know. Don't need another ascendancy. I guess I'll take it over Paradise Druid. I can go blue, blue. I can play a dig through time. Make sure not to delve our, um, our ribbons. I'll need away that other ascendancy. We could have made use of a second ascendancy, like. The second ascendancy does give us more mana, but honestly, we really don't need it. Um, retraction helix means that we have to we can draw our entire deck, so I'm going to take retraction helix hydro form. Um, and now, I think I'm going to hydro form first, just so that we start getting triggers on something that flies. So we'll make our steam vents a creature. Draw and. Just in time, Silver Awakening. All right, we don't need this dig anymore. It's interesting that people seem to be considering this Sylvan Awakening like the win card. Um, it's definitely not the win card. I wonder what they're doing. This is taking a lot of time to execute online. Well, I guess they're just waiting a couple seconds, sure. Here we can play a Sylvan Awakening. Draw, don't need this Acolyte. All of our creatures become, or whatever. I wonder if this maintains its flying or if because of layers it goes away. So it, it does maintain its like flying 3-3 thing, I guess. It, but it also gains indestructible and reach. Oh no, that's a Jeskai Ascendancy trigger. That's strange. I guess that's right. That's how it should work. I'm going to make as much red mana as possible so that in the event that I ever possibly want to pump something with this Dragon Mantle, I can. Uh, pro tip, I'm, I'm not going to need to. Don't need that. Um, temple, definitely not needed. Blue, green, red, red. We'll play an opt first. Bottom of Paradise Druid. Uh, Expediate is like fine. Again, a lot of this doesn't matter. Maybe he'll scoop to black mana for the. Uh, Whatever it's called. Yep, he's had enough. Okay, so another nice 2 0. This time against, um, like, just red green monsters. And we're queuing into match four. So far, we're 2 and 1 with what I think is a pretty sweet Jeskai Ascendancy list. So I guess, um, obviously, because we're playing Jeskai Sensei, I've been talking about Jeskai Sensei this whole time, but it's definitely worth thinking about some of the other combo decks in this format. So um, I know people are trying out the uh, the Kethis combo. I mentioned Nexus earlier as something people were messing around with. If you've been playing like Emery Paradoxical Outcome versions of Jeskai Sensei. Um, so there's, there's definitely a lot of interesting space to work in for sort of... Uh, 
storm-like or engine-like combo decks. Um, we do have both Neoform and Eldritch Evolution legal in the format, so maybe there's something cute that can be done there, although obviously we don't have access to Crystal Brand. I think I'm interested in keeping this. I think it's a it's an interesting question whether I lead on Stomping Grounds or Breeding Pool on tapped. Obviously I want to hold up this Veil of Summer in case they're a discard deck. I could lead on Mana Confluence. Um, actually maybe I will lead on Mana, Mana Confluence, that way I don't shock unless I have to. It does kind of maybe give away what we're playing a bit more though, but maybe that just makes them more interested in thoughts using us. Stomping Grounds. Guess everyone's playing red decks. Gilded Goose. Okay. So I think I think I may actually just cut this. Here's the part where they're reading cut to ribbons, maybe. Hopefully. <laughs> Servant of the Conduit. Don't really know what this is yet. Maybe it's just some sort of ramp deck. I think it's very unlikely that we ever need the Spell of Summer. It's possible that at some point on like an end step, I um, I like just play it to get another card in my graveyard for take through time. But that's the reason I'm not playing this breeding pool um, untapped. So what else you got? Four mana, you could play like a questing beast or something. Two mana, three mana, Oko. Oh, it is an Oko, sure. Get the food and elk and hit with it. So that was largely the reason why I cut the Guilty Goose. I was thinking about a possible Oko. And then they played a plane, so I'm like, wait. But then it was an Oko. Alright, so we'll play a Crash Through. We do need to find a Jeskai Ascendancy. Uh, I'm going to play another Paradise Druid here. And I think I'm not going to use this Paradise Druid. Next turn, ideally, we find a uh, a Jeskai Sensei off the top because then we would win. But barring that, I might be able to um, set up like a dig through time or something so that we can try and win the next turn. We'll see. I think I am going to end step this veil because I do have Mantle Helix, so I don't need this for an for an ascendancy trigger ever. Um, so I I'm probably am going to accept this. I'm like maybe they play a, uh, a blue or black card this turn. We'll see. They played Oko. Maybe they have like make a food and like make another Oko. If they are, that'd be kind of annoying. So they're holding up mana for the servant. I wonder what they have after this. Beldar Guardian. Okay. They have Flicker and Oko? Yeah, they do. So they're like a Naya or a four color um, Sahili Oko deck. So they're, yeah, I guess they're just the Sahili deck with green. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine. So we would actually be dead if they attacked with everything. I'm definitely interested in just playing this fail. Jeskai Ascendancy. Right off the top, just like we drew it up. Perfect. Never didn't have it. Uh, 
else we will we'll loot here usually it's beneficial to loot although not always and then I'm gonna play a retraction helix on this one we'll loot, we'll loot again here probably just gonna discard this dig through time to save time so we make a red we'll bounce the dragon mantle we'll play the dragon mantle Dragon Mantle on this one. Okay, so they, they understand that I have infinite draw. So Retraction Helix plus Dragon Mantle with an actual active Jeskai Ascendancy draws my deck. Okay, so we're against Sahili. So Retraction Helix as an interaction piece will be nice. I think it's probably pretty unlikely they have room for too much counter spells, especially given that we saw a Veil of Summer, so I think I'm not that interested in that. I'll take a Sylvan Awakening for a little bit more consistency, I'll take a Fiery Impulse to have a bit of removal. I could think about a Silence to potentially try to stop the combo. Two cards to cut. Maybe we don't really need the Silence. Well, we're on the draw. Silence is a bit better on the draw. I could cut like a crash through and maybe an awakening on the draw. I feel like they could definitely, well, I'm thinking about whether or not they're like a deafening clarion deck or something like that. They do have mana dorks of their own. So I'm going to hesitantly guess probably not, but I don't really know for sure. It's possible I could cut a dig on the draw for being a bit slow. That might actually be the, be the play. Uh, no, but I might need the dig if it gets like a little bit grindy and I have to um, dig for uh, like another Jeskai Sensei if one gets blown up because they definitely have like artifact or enchantment removal, I'm sure. This hand has no lands, so unfortunately we cannot keep it. If I could like trade a couple of these out for lands, I'd definitely keep it. This hand also has no land, so we have to mulligan again. This hand has a land, and so definitely keeping Ascendancy, definitely keeping Opt, definitely keeping Commune. It's just a question of which these I get rid of. I think I get rid of Mantle because Ex Expedite lets me get that second creature out first faster lets me like haste out a second creature um and they both just kind of cycle and like i kind of need the second creature before i can go off with mantle and retraction helix okay so i'm on the draw this time let's see what i draw I draw a temple so i think i'm interested in leading on the temple here actually before opt definitely interested in the silly carry added that's that's a very good draw So next turn I can play carry added. Servant of the Conduit, sure. Now hopefully like he just like plays an Oko or something next turn. Now that's a sentence you don't hear much. Hopefully they play an Oko, but that's the nice thing about playing uh like combo decks. Sometimes you just don't care that they have an Oko. I think uh I said to a friend of mine recently, um my goal in every single deck I play is to make Oko a terrible magic card. Every deck, Legacy, Modern, hopefully Standard, although I don't know what I'm playing yet for uh, the SCG Invitational. That's coming up and I need to decide on a Standard deck. I'm sort of tentatively thinking about, this could be bad. The Feldar next turn could be in a lot of trouble. By a lot of trouble, I mean dead. Stomping grounds. Okay, so maybe we can try and go off this turn because we have a Jeskai Ascendancy. Um, 
white, blue, and play our ascendancy. We can play, what did I board out? I didn't board out any of the, um, what are they called? Um, the creature things. Don't think I have time or room for that. Although I could cut the servant, but no. Let's speediate this. Not ideal. Another good option would have been finding Retraction Helix. That would have been uh, powerful. Hopefully the fact that they're scrying with this means they don't have their Felidar. By hopefully I mean it does. Definitely means they don't have their Felidar. I have Oko, but Oko can't hit enchantments. So maybe they have some sort of removal, but I think they would have just main faced it if they did. Well, they know I'm either tapped out or mostly tapped out. I dig through time. That's a pretty good draw. It's not amazing, but I think it's pretty good. I think here I'm most interested in starting with a commune. So I'll bottom this, or I'll ditch this temple. Uh, I guess I'll take another Jeskai Ascendancy because I already have a Paradise Druid in hand. So now, now I can go for a dig through time. And hopefully I can find like land plus Sylvan Awakening or something. Draw. Retraction Helix. I now have interaction if I need it. I think it actually might be the fire impulse. Okay, so Sylvan Awakening Matter Conference. Does that do it? I think it does. Or Sylvan Awakening Breeding Pool. Because I have land, I play the Sylvan Awakening. I do need to cantrip it into something, but I think it's definitely that. I guess it might as well be the breeding pool. So now I can play this, I can shock. I can go one, two, three, play my Sylvan Awakening. I just need to loot into like a cantrip or something really. Cause I am gonna be, all of these take me down a card. So I need, I need something that maintains card parity or even takes me up a card. So that was perfect. Cause now, I have the attraction helix to untap all of my lands. Are they debating conceding? Hopefully they are. Notably another turn four. What do they have? Do they have like a bounce spell or something? Harness lightning. These are indestructible, my friend. And discard, I don't know, another attraction helix, it doesn't matter there. One, two, three, four, five. We have dig through time. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two. So things are looking real good. And they scoop, and that's another win for Jeskai Ascendancy. Turn four kill. All right, let's play our last match in this league. I'm really having a blast here. Um, I think this deck is strong, but I think it is hopefully not like too strong in a way that it gets banned. Um, I know they said they were going to be pretty heavy-handed with bans kind of right out of the gate, but it, it feels like... 
It feels like we're like, well, I don't know. I, I'm not 100% sure. I, I can't say for certain that this like won't get banned or will get banned. I think, I think this is a keep. I have a removal spell. My lands being Skylands here is a little bit annoying. Both of them, like one of them is good because I have a Scry on turn one. But then I probably need to like turn two commune for like a turn three um, creature. This, this is looking a little bit iffy, but we'll see. I am on the play at least. I think I'm going to lead maybe on Temple of Mystery. Hopefully they, they could think I'm like on some sort of like Oko deck or like a, a Nexus deck or something. Already thinking about what I could try to bluff. I'm in oh, that's another reason to uh, lead on the green source. Yeah, I'm interested in this. Maybe I can make this Rose Thorn my mana creature if I like find this and see off commune Springleaf Drum Affinity. So they're probably not like by Affinity I mean like the Insol all the glitter stack I think. Uh, so they're probably not gonna have um, that much removal. I don't I don't I don't know what removal they could have. So I'm I'm gonna hope that yeah I'll take Paradise Druid. I was hoping to find Jeskai Sensei there, but I mean, I, I do hopefully have enough time to like next turn Temple Druid, turn after that, like hopefully I find a land and then I can like Rose Thorn plus Dig and like hit the Sensei on the Dig or something. I also do have a piece of removal here, so maybe I can slow them down if it comes to that. I mean, not if they like play a land and soul this Spring Leaf Drum, but if they like, I don't know, play a Steel Overseer, Chief Engineer, sure. Uh, probably have to kill that. Actually, that's that's really strong. They get to play out like all of their hand. Is this a PO deck? This might be a PO deck, I guess. I think we probably just have to kill that on site. I think I am interested in that. seems really scary and then next turn I think we're looking at acolyte pass what do you got another one oh, I could retraction heal no I can't retraction heal I'll see it so we have Sanctum. Let's cast Acolyte. All right, I need to fade one turn before I can start holding up interaction with Helix. I think I, I think I, I don't really know what this deck is capable of. It feels very scary, but like, is this like a PO? PO for like two is not that good. Is it like a Sahili? Is it. Uh, I can't even. Yeah, it could be a PO, but. Okay. Definitely PO. Sylvan Awakening. Quite a good draw, I think. I think I'm most interested. So one, two, three, four, five. It's actually a bit annoying because I, if I dig, I'm gonna have to delve away my uh, cut to ribbons. But I think I'd be able to kill them with Sylvan Awakening if I did that. So I'm pretty okay with that. And I think I definitely want to leave a white up here. So ideally, I hit like Jeskai Ascendancy plus land off of this. don't we hit we can take a commune I guess we can take a mana confluence goes in any order play a land for turn 
I can play like a Paradise Druid and then hold up Retraction Helix. Is that my best line? I think it probably is. The question is, do I... Do I bounce this Inspiring Statuary? Now. Spells you cast have Improvise. I think I do. Right? Yeah, I think, well. Does a PO deck kill me in the same turn that they go off, or do they just make a billion Thopters? Because if they PO their stuff back, they might not actually be able to kill me. I think I'm going to pass. Because I would like to save this for Dragon Mantle if possible. Not sure. It's possible I was supposed to bounce Statuary there. Emery is fine. What else he got? Doesn't have haste, so you can't like ascendancy or anything yet. This is definitely a bit of a slower game. I really need this Commune of Gods to hit. And we've put a decent number of things in the bottom of our library, so like, hopefully. What else do you got? Those two don't do anything yet. Is it a PO? Could be a PO. looks like a PO. Paradox Engine. That's interesting. Tap on Mama and Permanence you control. I think they probably need one more turn. Although, I mean, they have one card in hand, so I'll have perfect information after this. So we'll see what they... Uh, they do. Like if it can't cantrip, I don't think they have anything. Yeah, and I could have bounced the wishing well if they would have played something like on taps their lands or whatever. So I'm I'm glad I saved this retraction helix. Dig through Tarn. Okay, that's that's a pretty good draw. So we're gonna start with a commune. We find the Jeskai Ascendancy. So that is huge. So white or red, white, and blue. Jeskai Ascendancy. We have Dragon Mantle on the Paradise Druid. Uh, I think I'm actually not going to loot here because I, I don't think there's any card I want more than these three cards. Mm. I guess maybe, no, maybe I should have still looted. I think that was possibly a mistake. You know, here... I can play a Sylvan Awakening. Discard, I guess, a land. Play two twos. Now I can Retraction Helix, uh, the Rose Thorn, whatever. If I had a Sylvan Carry added, I would be doing that to the Sylvan Carry added, but I don't, so we're starting that. Now, okay. So we won that game. Uh, I think I'm definitely interested in this Tormod script. I think I'm interested in the fourth retraction helix. I think I'm interested in silence. I think I'm interested in fiery impulse. Maybe Thud. Is Thud better than Cut to Ribbons? I think it's actually not. 
Veil, I have no idea if they play counter magic or not. <laughs> this is the downside of not having stock lists. I'm gonna I'm gonna guess that they probably do and leave in a couple of them. You're gonna cut a rose thorn. We'll cut maybe a crash through, we'll cut a Hydro form. We're on the draw though, so that's some of this is our speed. I don't know if I want to be cutting our speed on the draw. Maybe we will cut like one veil. And then like maybe the last crash through. Go like this. Oh wait, that's 61 still. Uh, I don't know, let's cut a dick. Dick's not that great in multiples. This is, I think, fine if a little shaky. Sylvan Awakening is nice. Potentially have interaction if we can find a creature. We have some opts to try and find the Jeskai Ascendancy. And we're on track to make like four land drops, so maybe our route to victory this game will be turn three Ascendancy, turn four Sylvan Awakening plus Spell. Commune is, I think, a pretty good draw. Drastically improves our chances of hitting an Ascendancy. What do you got? Chief Engineer again. This is a pretty good card. Definitely interested in the mana creature. So I think I'm gonna play that this turn over the um, over the commune. It also means I have Helix live from next turn onward as like an interaction piece. So I really like Helix as like both an interaction and a combo piece. Another chief engineer, that's not really that big of a deal. Maybe we are the boogeyman. Maybe we are just the best combo deck. Um, okay, so I think before I decide what land I'm interested in, I think I want a commune. It's probably gonna be an untapped land. We whiff the commune. That's not great. Question is, do I think he has anything next turn? Otherwise, I'd really like the scry. I think mm, I think I do need to actually scry. In the end of turn, I'm gonna opt. I need to I need to find something because I have like nothing going on right now. So if I go shields down at like a medium spot for a chance at a better future, I think that's a risk I'm willing to take at this point. Looks like their deck needs a lot of pieces. Yeah, they have like a sigh. I don't care about a sigh. I mean, I, maybe they kill us here with like a... And they don't have the thing that gives non-artifact spells. Uh, I mean, they're playing Ornithopter, so that's that's good news. Like, I don't even know what they could commune out here. That commune was really bad. We'll opt. I'll take another opt. Opt into opt. Temple of Mystery. So we're gonna opt first. I'll top that. Just keep cycling. Dragon Mantle, my dude. Draw a card. Commune is a good draw. So we'll go green, red, or whatever. Commune, find a Jeskai Ascendancy. Play a Skyland, try and find like a cantrip or something to leave on top. Definitely bottom that. Pass. So if we can fade one more turn, we should win here. Let's see what he's got. Oh, he definitely has some Psy sacking going on. So this is 
off of a pretty medium hand, a probable turn five, but we'll see if we die. We might. I'm a little bit scared. Gain a life, sure. I mean, how much is it? Sack two artifacts. They can do that only once, unless they have another land. Like, it looked like they needed a lot of pieces. I mean, I guess they could convoke out, like... Shit, that's not that scary. I, mean, I guess it's more or less free. So that's, that is kind of scary. No, it only generates one replacement. No, but it itself is a replacement. So it is free. So it's a free cycle. That's that. One, two, three, four. They can go get... One, two, three, four. F they can go get a Paradox Engine, but I don't know if they can play it. Takes one more to go get it. And then they'd only have three mana. They'd have to have some zero drops. If they give their non-artifact things um, improvise, they could play that. Oh, they just have a PO. So that's, we might be dead now. That's worrisome. We're probably dead. He's gonna have so much mana. I guess I should have um, kept the helix up. I guess that maybe was a punt on my part. I think I should have kept the helix up. I guess these aren't drawing them cards at least, but they're playing out a million things for free and they just drew a whole bunch of cards. I have cut to ribbons in my deck, right? Yeah, I do. So if it comes down to it, I can probably kill them with cut to ribbons if I get another turn. But I don't really expect to get another turn here. This is four. I wonder what they have. Do they have sack side to draw? That'd be nice. They have an egg, yeah. Did they draw another PO? That seems likely. Maybe they can't actually kill me this turn, though. They just have to make a million dudes and pass. I should just be F6ing here, because it's not like I have any interaction. And they know I don't have any interaction. I would have used it by now if I had it. They have a wishing well in hand, too, I know about. I guess we can see, we'll see a pretty big chunk of their deck and we'll see whether or not they might have any counter magic. So hopefully I can board out these veils, like bring back in, um, if I, well I guess I can board out one veil, bring back in like probably a dig. Yeah, probably a dig. Maybe it's a mistake to just ever cut dig. Dig is really strong. So we're gonna wake it. Did I, do I have all three of those in? I don't. I think on the play I might be interested in bringing that in as well. I can take out some of my like accelerant stuff. Are they? They're just in the tank. I don't really know what they're doing here yet. Come on, pass, pass, pass. No, it's not pass. All right. Um. What are they tanking so hard on? Like if they have. The thing that gives the non artifact stuff improvise and like Paradise Engine, we can just like play all this out. Paradise or Paradox Engine probably just kills us. I guess Psy is more scary than I gave it credit for. Just like generating the tokens as combo pieces is relevant. Definitely should have kept up for sure. Attraction Helix. Because then, like, I might have been able to bottleneck him after that. What is happening right now? 
blue for five. That's a paradox engine. Passing? Do they not? Oh, they used blue when they maybe shouldn't have. Now they're dead. Now they're dead. So I think I kind of punted that, but then they punted it right back to me. That's my read on that, I think. Um, so here we have white, blue, uh, red, Jeskai Ascendancy. Oh, they have spell pierce. Okay, well, that explains things. No, but I can pay it. Well. Oh, because they can't kill me this turn. That's what that's what the point is. Oh, this is gonna choke them out a lot, but I guess I'm gonna pay it. because they can't kill me the same turn that they're going off, so they're just saying, I'm going to kill you next turn. Probably. Okay, so let's let that resolve. I have another spell pierce. Okay. That, that gets us. So, hmm. guess we're leaving these, uh, these Vale of Summers in. Let's see what he manages to do. I'm curious, curious to see. Probably just dead here now. But probably just, just dead, I mean definitely just dead here now. I want to see how they kill us. We'll be on the play for game three, so that's good. Our set, okay. Yeah, that that'll that'll probably do it. I just want to see more of their deck. Our set being like a piece that interacts with our combo. Again, another spot where Retraction Helix is fantastic. Paradox Engine, good card. So there's maybe some like tiny sliver of hope if we like, if they have no other counter magic and we draw a Jeskai Ascendancy off the top, but realistically, there is not. I don't know, like, they have to pump their team, though, to actually kill us, and I'm curious as to, like, what would pump their team. I guess maybe they, ha they could have, like, a Sahili and, oh, Aetherflux, that'll, that'll, that'll do it. So Aetherflux does actually one-shot us. So they should have been able to kill us last turn. I'm gonna make them take some time on this, though. Appear to be going kind of slow. I know timing out someone not exactly the most honorable thing, but hey, tickets are tickets. We're already getting our play points back. I mean, I guess there's play points, but there's the Aether Flux OS4. I'm really missing like Angel's Grace right about now. So let's see what they play. Just want to see as many cards as I can. We have 15 minutes, which should be plenty of time. I'd like it for to show the storm count, but I guess it doesn't.
thing, yeah. So that was gain five, so they need, what's this, this is 50. So they need six, seven, eight, nine, four more spells, so yeah, they have it. Maybe they'll show us something that they wouldn't have otherwise shown us, though. All the info you can get. Paradoxical. Oh, they're just using sign more. Top secret mode would be if they like accidentally paradoxical for like way too much and draw the rest of their deck out after building themselves low with Emery. That's never gonna happen, but sure, you have a chief engineer. I mean they've they've taken like 30 minutes or so to cast like five spells. I think they've got it now, but. Sorry for making all of you guys wait for this. Just uh, skip ahead a little bit if, uh, if that's what's going on. There's. There is some merit to making them show us more cards. We're wishing well, so we didn't really see a ton new, but like, you know, playing a lot of Chief Engineers, I mean, we kind of could have assumed that there were, but, okay. So, I think that was a mistake to cut that. I think I'm more interested in Sylvan Awakening or on the play. I think I'm interested in Veil of Summer. I think I'm not actually that interested. In, well, Torment Script is kind of an accelerant, actually. I could be okay with that. I feel about cut to ribbons. Yeah, not really great, but it's fine. Fire impulse doesn't kill Psy, it only really kills Emery. Doesn't I mean sometimes it'll kill the chief engineer. Yeah, we can cut that. I'd like to get like cards that do stuff back in here. Maybe we don't need the third Sylvan, we'll be playing our Matadorks out faster. And maybe we can cut Cut the cut. Maybe we can. Do we want a third veil? That's another option. Sounds can be used aggressively. Veil is only defensive. I think I'm okay with cutting a veil. Cutting a rose thorn. We're playing and playing another veil. Cutting a rose thorn because Torment Script is kind of filling that same role. Maybe cutting in. Well, actually, the retraction. Well, retraction helps would have been okay. Yeah, maybe we cut and expediate. And we could bring in Leyline if we want to defend against Reservoir. But the goal is to stop them from comboing off in the first place, not to like actually interact with their combo. I think this is fine. Just keeping it. We do need to find like a Jeskai Sensei or something. Um, also, all of our lands are one color, color which is also. Filling our graveyard for this dig through time is going to be a little bit of a problem. No, I don't think I can. As much as I want that. Okay, that's a decent draw. Now I can actually play a Jeskai and see if I find one. So that was their draw for the turn, otherwise they would have played it last turn. Paradise Druid, decent, I guess. Play it. Uh, that was a punt. I should have played the Sanctum. Because this is going to come in tapped next turn. Probably not going to matter. We'll have six. I'd like some cantrips. 
let's see, because I need to get to the point where I can cast this day. Commune would probably, oh, other than just guys sentence itself, commune would be our best draw. Slowly. Do I Helix bounce this guy? I think I might. Gets me another card in my graveyard. If I do it, I'll do it now. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, and then next turn I can dig. So I'll target this creature. Bounce the hand. They definitely have a spell pierce that they're holding up. So I'm not gonna dig blind. Hopefully this sets them far back enough on tempo. I did that mainly because I saw that they missed their land drop. So I'm gonna play this tapped this turn and then next turn go through dig or go for dig. If they tap off of um if they tap out, I'm I'm gonna dig though. Oh no, I should have played an untapped land, so I could do that if they tap out. That was a punt. Punt for days. What do you got, my friend? We're not friends. Just in case you were wondering. Uh, what are these ugly basics? Oh, we can't basics. We're just like sitting here, like trying to make something out of nothing, because, you know. Mr. Glacier over here. I mean, I guess maybe he has a complicated turn. What has he got going on? I don't have that much time, but I don't think I can combo in the time that I have. Don't want to always yes to just guys. Let's see, so there's that. Golden Egg is fine. Amber doesn't do anything yet. Don't have an Emery, so that's good. What do we got? We've got a Jeskai Ascendancy. Fantastic. I would like to pay two life, and then I would like to play said Jeskai Ascendancy. It's white, blue, red. Mystical dispute. Well, it's a good thing I have a veil of summer. Uh, I shouldn't have used my veil of summer. I was thinking that I would like to. Well, if I draw a cantrip, then it lets me combo off. So there is some case that I should have, but it's it's. I think it's probably worse than just like passing with veil up. Hopefully they don't have removal for it now. I, I don't think they're able to just like kill me out of nowhere here. I'd be very surprised. What do you have though? You definitely have like a bounce spell or something. I don't really know what it would be. Emery, that's fine. Perilous Voyage. Okay, so they do play bounce spells. Paradoxical? Oh, Narset. Good thing we have Dig Through Time. Very good thing we have Dig Through Time. Spin Leaf Drum. Sure, probably gonna Convoke it. So hopefully we can find like a Retraction Helix off this Dig. Did I board one back out? Please tell me I didn't. All right, good, I didn't. With like the right land setup or whatever, I might also be able to like just kill the Narset, so that's an option. Do I draw like a Sultan, whatever the heck it is? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I think it's worth delving the two though. Four, five. I think I'm 
most likely to need double blue. Seven, eight. Dig for time, dig through time for six. Okay, so we have Retraction, Helix, Dragon, Man Dragon Mantle. So that should be a win. All right, because I can Helix first. Yeah, so now I can make a blue, make a red, Helix, my Sylvan carry added. So I, I mean, I can't get the loot yet, but I don't need the loot yet. Now, I bounce their Narset. I make a blue, play a Dragon's Mantle on the carry added. Now we go to town. Draw and discard. Plus one, plus one. Draw for turn. Draw a card. Blue and red. Play an opt. I'm, I'm not using the mantle thing yet because that's just like the most time consuming. Draw a discard. Um, plus one, plus one. Scry. Bottom. Uh, red. Black. Cut. Chief Engineer. Draw. Discard. Don't need another Ascendancy. Cut it. Green. Green. Commune. Use my green. I have plenty of time, but I'm just slightly paranoid. We're fine, though. Red. Black. Mantle this Paradise Druid. Draw. Discard. Plus one, plus one. ETB. Draw. Green. Green. We'll commute. Actually, no, we're not going to commute. We're, I don't want to mill myself too much. Mill Dragon's Mantle. Make a blue. Dragon's Mantle this. Draw. Discard. Draw. Blue. Dragon's Mantle. This. Make a red. Did I lose my Sylvan Awakenings? Hopefully not. Doesn't really matter. Replay. Draw a discard. I didn't lose my silver awakenings. Okay. So we'll go red, red, opt. I'm also making my paradise tree huge and that can attack. Draw. Discard this, whatever. Not that. I can play. So I'll make a couple green. We'll play another dude. Play this first one, Acolyte. Give it haste. Draw, discard, untap, draw. And we got there. Fantastic. Um, yeah, so I mean, we went four and one. Uh, let's let's pull up the list again. I definitely could have won that first game against Burn. I definitely misplayed a little bit in the th or the first match against Burn. Um, I definitely well, not I didn't misplay in that match. I don't think I feel like I got a little bit unlucky, but I mean, part of that is the consistency of the deck. So um, there was that. But more importantly, um, we won the remaining four matches. We beat uh, Red again, and then we beat, except the second time it was like a Red Prowess deck, and then we beat the Gruel Monsters. We beat the Wurza the last round. Or not the, you know what I mean, the Pioneer equivalent of Wurza. I forget what was, 
in round four, unless it was it wasn't another prowess deck. Oh, it was the the copycat. Yeah, it was Spell Dead Belly. Okay, um, so that was exciting. I definitely am interested in continuing to test with this list. I think there's definitely room to grow with it. Um, before we head out, I just want to show off the really stupid piece of tech that I uh, was thinking about. This card, uh, Flying Crane Technique. So let's make this huge so we can see what it does because there's no way this is a common card. So untap all creatures you control, they gain flying and double strike until the end of the turn. So the thing is, if we're in a heavy Sylvan Awakening version, like a version that has four Sylvan Awakenings, then it's definitely possible with like, you know, maybe we have like five, six lands in play and like a couple mana dorks. We might be able to just like play a Sylvan Awakening, play a Flying Crane Technique, and we have a bunch of flying double striking 2-2s two and we just kill them with that. Um, so that's a sideboard plan that I'm, you know, maybe vaguely starting to think about. Obviously, there's the Mentor sideboard plan. I didn't really feel like picking up Mentors online, uh, although I do think that that is a reasonable card to play. I think a lot of our, like, I think Retraction Helix really showed off its power. I think that's a very good card. Um, and I think even, like, Acolyte, Hydroform, Expedite... Um, that sort of like mana growth package mid combo uh, proved to be pretty good as well. Cut to ribbons, I think, also uh, definitely pulled its weight as like a flex removal slash win con. Um, and that's it. So I'm definitely going to be playing more Pioneer uh, coming up. I'm I'm definitely interested in trying out further iterations of this Jeskai Ascendancy deck. Maybe at some point I'll play some other decks, but this is the deck that I definitely like have my heart set on to start out. I know I also mentioned wanting to play some more Legacy at some point, um, so we'll be doing that as well. So give me a week or two before I get back to Modern. I know the focus of my channel has kind of always been Modern Ad Nauseum. I know if you're on the channel, you're probably there for that deck, but uh, I'll, I'll be returning to that somewhat soon because I do have the uh, SCG Invitational coming up and I will want to test a little bit for that. Honestly, at this point, I'm still not sure if I'm going to play Ad Nauseum or if I'm going to play a different deck. Um, I'm kind of torn. I don't really have any other decks that I feel like I should play but I also feel like I don't know I feel like Adnaz is not in the greatest spot either so we'll figure it out um, and I'll definitely have more guests at uh, some other point um, but you know change it up for today uh, just me recording at 1 30 a.m on the day that uh, Pioneer Weeks are released. So take care, and until next time.